What is going on guys? It's your boy Minimoto coming back at you with another one. In today's video, my striker, my carburetor, I tried adjusting my float and messed something up in it. So we got ourselves a new carburetor and in today's video I'm going to show you how to swap the carburetor on a wolf striker. So without further ado, let's pull this thing out of here, blow the dust off of it and get to work. All right, guys, we have the bike out. So first things first, why are we changing my carburetor? So if we look at the miles on my Wolf Striker, I have 4,392 miles. And recently, the bike hasn't wanted to start, really. It's been starting, but it's been hard to start. Well, I realized that if you just cut the fuel on here, let it sit for a second. If you cut the fuel on and look right there, as you can see, or maybe you can't, but right there, you can see gas just kind of pouring out. There we go. Now we got it going. So I'm pretty sure my float just needs to adjust it to fix this, but it's such a micro adjustment. I decided screw it. Let's just get a new carb. So I'm going to show you how to get that one off and swap that one on. Alright, so the tools we're going to need today, we need a flathead screwdriver. We need an 8mm wrench, um, a pair of pliers or a pair of vice grips, um, just a couple of those, and a Phillips head. And then we also need our new carburetor. And to get this carburetor off, you're going to want to disconnect this fuel line. Make sure you pinch it with a pair of pliers or vice grips or something so the fuel doesn't come running out. Uh, you're going to want to undo this Phillips head. Take this cable out of this bracket. Take this vacuum line off. There's another one up there. Two 8mm bolts and the cap for the throttle. And then of course you'll have to loosen this hose clamp. I already had it loose to show you what my problem is. So I'm going to set up a time lapse and we're going to pull this off and I'll show you the next step. guys so if you still have your emissions crap on this bike uh, which is whatever the hell this thing does um, to make it easier to get to that bolt back there that's holding your carburetor on pop this hose off take it out of the way you can take it all the way off I normally just spin it around like this also if anybody has a good video on how to delete this stuff uh, a good step-by-step -step video um, specifically for the wolf striker Send me that link, please. So, anyways, we're going to get that bolt out, and then we should be able to pull our carburetor off. So we have our carburetor loose from our manifold. Um, last thing we need to do is pop this hose off, unscrew this cap here, and this whole thing should pull right off. I will show you how this goes back in, but if you don't feel like watching this video all the way, make sure you pay attention when you pull this out. To the which way it goes in um, because if you put it in backwards your bike will start screaming when you start it up so now that we have our old carburetor off um, because I have an exhaust on this bike I have jetted this old carb out so what I'm gonna do is take my new stock carb take the old jetted carb and I'm gonna pull the jets out of this one and swap them into the new one that way my bike runs the way it did before with this carb also, if it is a stock carburetor, you do have non-tamper screws. Um, just take a Dremel, cut a slot into it, and you should be able to get it out with a flathead. And then just you can reuse those or replace them with um, carburetor screws. Just if you do reuse these, be careful not to over-torque them because they don't need to be that tight. 
They need to be snug, but they don't need to be sent to the moon. Okay, so now we have both carburetor bowls off. And you can see, this is your main jet, that's your idle jet. Same thing over here, main jet, idle jet. We're going to be taking these and swapping them into here. And yeah, so it's just a little flathead. Unscrew it, unscrew it, and then take those and re-screw them in here. So let's do that. Now for anyone wondering what I jetted my carb out to, um, I have a Grom exhaust with the baffle in it. So if you're curious what my jet sizes are, um, the stock one is an 82 main and a 35 idle i have still the 35 idle and then i have my main jet drilled out from an 82 to an 85 so you can either drill it out with specialty carburetor drill bits or you can just order yourself a set of jets with an 85 although your carburetor tuning will be dependent on where you live in the world don't follow exactly what I'm saying. This is just what seems to work best for me. Now the last thing you want to swap out is actually the slide inside of the carburetor. You don't really have to change the spring. I'm going to change the spring just because I have a new one. So I'm going to throw it in there. Technically you should be able to reuse that one. I don't want to reuse that one because I'm going to show you here in just a second why I don't want to reuse it. Okay, now that I have the old slide off you can probably see it better right there versus right there. See that little divot right there? I think I just want to swap this one out. So like I said, it matters which way this slide goes in and because the new one's on the bike already, let me just show you with the old one. So you have your idle screw and fuel adjustment screw on this side and then on this side you just have like your choke and stuff. So you have a long slit and a short slit on this side. If you look down in there, that little metal thing sticking out on this side, that's your idle screw. The more you screw it in, the more it pushes on this little thing and slides this up. Upping your idle, the more you unscrew it, the more this can go down. Lowering your idle, and then this slot lines up with that right there, and that keeps your slide from spinning around. So it goes in there just like that. As I'm putting my carburetor back in here, I just wanted to mention, don't forget to put this little plastic spacer. Your O-ring on your carb faces the non-O-ring side on this, and then the O-ring on this faces your intake manifold. And as you can see, we've got her running again. Now the moment of truth, because this normally happens when you cut the key off, which it doesn't seem like it's going to. So, yeah, let's go take this thing for a rip. Let's get the GoPro on and rip her around the block see if this fixed it guys it has been so long since i've been on this bike man hell yeah it's been probably two to three weeks since i rode this thing um well You know, it helps if you cut the fuel on. Oh yeah, now she's good. All right. So let's take this thing for a quick little rip. Cause it's been so long guys. Oh, it feels good to be back on my baby. Turn the fuel on, it would start flooding. This one so far, um, other than that little mishap of me forgetting to turn the fuel on, honestly, seems to be running pretty good. Um, I do need to add a little bit of fuel, but it's not too, too bad. Um, yeah, we'll probably take a little quick, little, little, 
we'll probably take a quick little rip through Youngsville here and then we'll go home because I don't feel like getting wet and I also have uh, another video that I'm filming today uh, it probably won't drop today it, but I am doing the sprocket uh, 17 tooth upgrade um, on my champion so once I get home I'm gonna go film that so more content coming soon guys I'm, I'm working on it I'm working just I'm sure as all of you know it's been pretty damn difficult to get parts for some of these little things. I'm looking like a damn squid right now, yo. I didn't even put a jacket on, man. Not a hoodie, not nothing. Just my gloves, my helmet, let's fucking roll. That's how much I miss this fucking thing. Hell yeah.